Bring we're gonna t- we're gonna talk to Gohan. Hi, Gohan. Please let me know if I'm pronouncing Hi. your name correctly. We are uh, you're on the atheist experience. Uh, what would you like to talk about today? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Go Gohan's correct. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, you're yeah. like the the Dragon Ball Z character, right? You got it. Yes, sir. Radical. Cool. I've never watched the show, but I know the name. I'm excited. <laughs> well, uh, let me just do a little bit of uh, baseless advertising. There's a movie coming out for Dragon Ball Z in a couple months. What? So if you're interested, go watch it. Whoa. Dude, I'm always down for new things. That sounds cool. I, I don't know. I, I, it's got a, such a massive fan base. It must be good, right? My kid loves it. Oh, yeah? I, I might Why? be a little biased, but yes, it's good. <laughs> right on. I'm sorry to ramble about your name. What are you calling about, man? Uh, I was going to talk about abortion. Okay, cool. Uh, awesome. Um, we'll talk about- I was just going to say um, one, one argument I've heard a lot uh, recently, ever since the leak came out, was uh, comparing abortion to um, organ donation. I just wanted to uh, get y'all's thoughts on that, and I do have a rebuttal, but I want to know if you guys kind of agree that that is uh, comparable. In in a way, I, I've used that that line of reasoning to say. In fact, Chan and I were talking about this just before the show. Mm-hmm. Is that if uh, you know if I want to donate my organs here in America, like if I if I want to be an organ donor, I have to sign off on that before I die, right? So if I die and you need my heart to live, and I didn't sign off on that before I died, now we're both dying, right? That's just how it is. So right. if we're gonna say that you know someone with the uterus can't decide who gets to use that uterus to survive then we're saying that if you have a uterus, you have less re- less rights than a literal corpse. And that's kind of a weird argument to make, to say that you gain more civil rights after death. You know? It's like, that's how I would present it. I don't know if that's what you were arguing or what you were what you were bringing up or not. Uh, that, that is what I was bringing up, and I do have a rebuttal for it. Um, it and Shannon, is that kind of your stance as well? Yeah, I'm on record basically anywhere anybody okay. can find me saying um not specifically a forest argument but a similar version and it has to do with the fetuses having like a special set of rights Mm. Uh, basically my position is that in no other circumstance does anybody have a right to any component of somebody's body to sustain their own life Uh, like for example if i if you if i was in a room with someone we had the same blood type and i stabbed that person for example they were bleeding to death and i was the only person in the room and i was responsible for that i stabbed them i was responsible for the harm that was just took place for this person and the reason that they are dying um nobody anywhere has the right to force me to give that person a blood transfusion they will just die you cannot violate my personal autonomy uh, in any system that I'm aware of, by forcing me to give that person a blood transfusion, I would have to do it of my own volition. So why does somebody who is actually murdering somebody else have more rights to bodily autonomy um, than any woman on earth? As somebody who just had sex, and that's that's the thing is that like you're if you're if you're pro force birth, you're saying you have more rights before you're born and more rights after you die. And in mm-hmm. that middle ground where you're actually alive and kicking, you're fucked. Like that's it's very strange. There's more counter arguments to abortion <laughs> being legal as well, or there's more arguments, I should say. But that's that's one that I'm, I feel is pretty strong in my opinion. Yeah. I said that's a pretty fair question. Um, it sounds very similar to the violinist. Um, I have a uh, rebuttal I heard from a pro life apologist, uh, Trent Horn. Um, I've Earth spoken Island. to Trent oh, about please. abortion. Sorry. I've actually spoken to Trent directly uh, about abortion. But yeah, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> cool. Um, it's called the reverse violinist. I, I, I've called the atheist experience and discussed the reverse violinist before. I want to talk about the violinist and um, organ donation. So both of you guys are kind of agreeing that organ donation is kind of analogous to forced pregnancy. Um, so my rebuttal to that is if I fail to give an organ to somebody who needs it or if I fail to keep the violinist alive and I walk away, mm-hmm. um, what does that person die of? If the person needs a kidney, if I fail to give them my kidney, what do they die of? 
They die of kidney failure, but you didn't kill them. Okay. Right. Agreed. If uh, somebody is pregnant and they don't want to be and they have an abortion, what does mm-hmm. the fetus die of? Of not being sustained of, of, of whatever, but the mother didn't kill them. No. Or the mother-to-be, the, I should say. The doctor does. They, they, always, they always kill the fetus before they take it out. If they take the fetus out, it's technically a live birth, and then it's a, under everybody's definition, that's inarguably a human person. So then the doctor is responsible for that life. So they always kill the fetus before they take it out. So I'm not an abortion doctor, so I have no idea. I, I have no idea if that's accurate you could be, or not. You could, you could be telling the truth or you could be not telling the truth, but I still don't think that, I don't it think wouldn't. that that's a rebuttal. Like in that, in that instance, um, if you're saying, if, let's let's all accept that as true for the sake of argument right now. I'll just okay. for the sake of argument. Um, if you if if you're saying that in in this case a doctor is dismembering the or uh, killing the fetus in order to take it out, um, that still would not be um, the person with the uterus causing that. Right. No. So in this no, instance, your your not. problem would be with the method in which it is done, um, mm-hmm. as opposed to not the problem being the with the fact that it is done. Not not necessarily the method. To me, it doesn't matter how you kill the fetus. It's the fact mm-hmm. that you are directly and purposefully killing the fetus. If I well, what do you think of, of my I'm scenario where I stabbed you? So, like, let's look at, like, yeah, this is actually so, analogous to my initial point that I made. But I stab you. Right. You and I are in a room. I stab you. You are bleeding to death. You are dying because I stabbed you. You are dying of a stabbing. The only way to save your life is for me to give you my blood. Do I have to give you my blood? What, what are you, what am I dying from? Am I dying from you? A stab wound. wound. From, from blood <laughs> loss, yeah. From blood loss, yeah. A stab wound. So, you're dying from blood loss. Yeah. And if from, I give you a transfusion, from, you'll survive. Uh, uh, I'm not dying from a failure of organ donation or blood transfusion. I'm dying from the stabbing. Right. So I could you save you in this scenario, right, by giving you my blood. Right. Right. So one, do I have to? Not, uh, abortion, is not, abortion is not about for saving. It's about against killing. So no, so you're you're always... not answering my question, though. Like, So you still haven't given me an answer oh, to my oh, question. Okay. So, so, so then let me answer it. No, you do not yeah. have to. Why? Why don't I have to? Because you're not. Because what you did to me, the thing that's killing me is the stabbing. You're not mm-hmm. bound to save my life. You are bound to not kill me. So I did kill you in that scenario, though, right? I uh, I right, stabbed right, you. Right. That's, so, why you, that's why you would get in trouble. You wouldn't get in trouble I, because you didn't save my life. You would get in trouble because you stabbed me. Yep. So I, a, I I think I get where you're coming from here, though. Yeah, I, I, don't, I think I'm seeing the me. distinction. Okay. It, it sounds like what you're saying. Is that you know it's you're you're absolving the the uterus haver the mother to be the whatever you know you're absolving this person because all they're doing is separating their organs from this fetus but you're saying that the doctor that is performing this procedure is directly and actively ending a life whereas the other person is just disconnecting from the life this doctor is actually ending the life and so they are performing an act of murder is that more what you're saying? Uh, pretty close. Um, I am going to change it okay. a little bit. I'm going to say the yeah. doctor would kind of be uh, viewed as a hitman. So if they hired a hitman, they would be culpable as well. Okay. So I see, I get where you're going. That's a funny analogy. Um, so <clears throat> the problem that I have with that is that there is a distinction between ending a pregnancy and ending a life. And so you said earlier on that doctors kill the fetus before they extract it. Again, I don't think that's accurate, yeah. but if even if it is like it's if if it isn't if it's just ending the pregnancy then that's that's moot. But if that is the case, well, I mean, like, then we can start having the discussion about personhood because what you said a minute ago also is that everybody can agree that this is a human person, and there are a lot of people that wouldn't. And if your argument is that this is a cluster of cells with unique human DNA, okay, I brush out a lot of those every time I brush my teeth in the morning. And so, like, where do we yeah, draw the line on that, and how do we define life? Uh, uh, can I butt in really quick? By all means, yeah. If you aren't killing human organisms, you're killing human cell. 
Um, sometimes the cell can be an organism. Sometimes it's just tissue. But right, a fetus right. is a human organism. You are a human organism. The cells in your mouth are not human organisms. So you're saying there's a certain point where you, you are killing the entire thing rather than just a chunk of it. Yeah, so if you kill the entire thing, that would be killing a human organism. Um, and I, I've called with this statement before. I don't think you should be able to kill a human organism unless there's high risk of severe harm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have, an, I have another question because now I'm confused about what your view is on abortion just in general. Go for it. So, so okay. if that's the argument that you were making, then you don't think that it's wrong for a woman to, re or a, so anyone with a uterus who is pregnant, to remove the fetus or the embryo or the zygote or the blastocyst or whatever from their uterus. Like yeah, that, that the, act is the, not incorrect. That the, like the, the woman is allowed to make that choice. You would say that, yeah, right? Yeah, as long as the human, as long as the human organism doesn't die, then yes. Uh, like if there's like an advancement in science where we can make some type of embryo or uh, outside uterus in the future, right? Yes, by all means, if you don't want to be pregnant, take that human out and put in right. something that can sustain it. But okay. just don't kill it. But so we don't currently have, so I'm understanding what you're saying. So you're saying that if, if there was some sort of technology where, uh, that, that could function like a uterus and we could somehow extract like whatever state this, this pregnancy is in out of the uterus and place it in that machine to sustain its life until it's viable on its own, then, then it would be acceptable to make this decision. But Pro since we don't have that technology available, it's currently not acceptable for a woman to make that decision. Yes. And by the way, they do have that technology in Dragon Ball Z. I'm just going to state that. Like <laughs> okay. All right. Hell yeah. Enough. All right. So, so like my biggest issue with what you're saying here, and, and I, I, I'm going to ask a couple of questions because I want to make sure that this is what you're saying, is what it sounds to me is that the premises that you're laying out do make sense but where you're going with it is a completely arbitrary line. And I, I, I want to draw attention to that more than anything. Um, you said a second ago that you well, think what's that... What's the arbitrary uh, line? Well, what I mean is that you uh, said sorry, a second ago that... Sorry? I was going to ask, what is the arbitrary line? Oh, I think Forrest is well, getting there. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. I promise. Yeah, yeah. That, um, so you okay. said a second ago that uh, you don't think that abortion should be allowed except in cases where you know this this pregnancy is life threatening to to the mother right let's say for an ectopic pregnancy for example is that uh, very not, right not, not only not only life threatening but high risk of severe harm so whatever okay. cool. like severe harm would allow you to kill a five-year-old maybe it's uh they're going to cut off one of your limbs i think you can shoot that right. five-year-old uh okay like that's not what like, about like what about cases of rape or incest uh, no, I don't think it should be allowed then. Okay. So I, and I'm just this purely rhetorical just to see where your lines are. What you are saying is that there is a certain point where one person's life is worth more than another person's life. Uh, no. Why not? Why is that not what you're saying? You, you just said that if, if someone's going to cut off your leg, you can kill a five-year-old to stop it. Yes. So if the, if the severe harm reaches that kind of level, if like you're going to lose a leg from a pregnancy, mm. I feel like uh, you should be able to kill that human, whether it's a five-year-old so or a fetus. So we're saying a fetus is a, a complete person with complete rights. So I'm going to abandon the word fetus and I'm just going to say another person just to be very clear that that's what we're talking about. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. Cool. So you are saying that if somebody... One that I I it, the the cost of a human life killing another person and the cost of this leg right here are the same. I can cut this leg off or I can kill a person if I have the choice. Either one is valid. I uh, are you talking about like uh, an innocent person or is it killing this person? Well, talk, this came along from a fetus, so I'm going to assume that the fetus has committed no crimes. 
So yes, I can kill an innocent person or I can cut off my leg. And if I decide to keep my leg and murder that guy, that's totally justifiable. I'm sorry, it, maybe innocent wasn't the right word. I should have used uh, like a non-threat. Sure, yeah, yeah, whatever. This this dude is is just minding those business. He's shopping at Walmart. He's picking up some clams. And I can either just gun him down in cold blood or I can lose a leg. And I'm deciding I'm keeping the leg. This bro isn't going home. That's totally fine because otherwise I might have lost a leg. Is that what you're arguing? No, sir. Okay, what's the difference between that and what you just said a minute ago? Because a minute ago, what I was saying was um, there is a direct um, direct action that they are taking either purposely or not that is going right. to make you lose your life. But you said that it's okay if a, you terminate a pregnancy if there's severe health complications. And one of the examples you gave, which I realized was fatuous, is that you were saying if, for example, they were to lose a leg, then it would be okay to terminate the pregnancy. So I'm saying, by what you just said, a human life is worth the same as a human leg. And so right here, I've got two lives ready to go. If I want to kill two people, but I can keep jogging in the morning, that's okay. And that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. No. Uh, so again, it's not the fact that it's a life versus a leg is the fact that that life is threatening your leg. Okay. Whether they're so doing if someone is trying, so if someone is coming at me trying to chop my leg off and I murder them, that's cool. So uh, I wouldn't can call I, that murder. I call that uh, right, rightful can killing. I, can right, I, but I you see how silly clarity. this argument is getting, though. That's the whole I, point of what I'm saying. Like, yeah, this that's is, why I want clarity for just one second. So because yeah, I'm fo I'm following what Forrest is saying because. In this scenario, like you couldn't really say that a fetus or an embryo has any sort of intent to cause the pregnant person harm, right? Like there, I was going. I'm so there, glad there's you got no there. there. Like a fetus isn't sitting in there going, "I am going to fuck my mom's gallbladder so hard that she has to have it taken out." Because I did that to my mom. <laughs> she had to have it removed shortly after because I kicked the shit out of it until it was dead. <laughs> it was gone, right? So, but I, I didn't actively make that decision. So that distinction that you're that you're drawing there, um, in that scenario, if that's justification that will allow me to end a pregnancy and you're because you're identifying a fetus as a fully autonomous person, then forest analogy stands because you're saying if I can kill an innocent person by your in your paradigm if I if there's any threat of harm to me and it mm -hmm. will prevent that harm from taking place. That is that is what you are actually saying when you make that argument. Yeah, that, that's, a, is, am I getting what you're saying there, Forrest? Am I putting the pieces yeah, together? No, you, you are. And that's exactly like that. I'm so glad you got to intent because that's where I wanted to go with it next. It's just oh, like, I understand. Where, when do we say that? And because this is what I meant when you said this is an arbitrary line. That's the arbitrary line I'm talking about is that you are picking a random oh, point okay, where you're like, okay, now second it's second okay. Yeah, yeah, by all means, respond. Please. Sorry. So it, for me, let me go back. I, it doesn't matter if it's purposeful or not. Let's say the five-year-old is coming at you to take off your leg, or let's say you're at a birthday party, the five-year-old grabs a sword and thinks it's fun as just swinging around. I think you have a right Happens. either way, whether they're trying to take off your leg or not, to shoot them. I think the same goes with the fetus. If they're trying to oh. kick or take off your leg somehow, then... Uh, okay, so, but they're not okay, well, trying so is we the are problem having, I have. Not, we're then we're having a totally different discussion is the thing you started out by talking about if i remember correctly organ donation and and the whole conversation right. at the beginning was about bodily autonomy it's not that conversation anymore right. we are not talking about bodily autonomy we're not talking about organs we're not talking about anything we're just talking about if you even think about wronging me your life is over and that's weird like no, you understand how weird that, that is it depends, <laughs> how, it depends how high risk it is so i said at first high risk of severe harm Right now, we've been talking about severe Which harm. is also That's an arbitrary line. Yeah. What does high risk mean? Yeah, when do you decide if it's high risk? For me, is the gallbladder high risk? Is the leg high risk? What's, you know? Also, it should be pointed out that, like, say, every pregnancy is, is risky. Risk. 
Yeah. You're going to have issues all no, the time. The, for our, our, no, your that, pelvis has true. to split. You're going to have eternal scarring. That is you're true. going to damage your pelvic floor muscles. <laughs> I, talk to, I don't know a pregnant <laughs> woman that doesn't have some part of her body that's completely numb. Like there's that there's the issues risk of postpartum there. depression is also a huge Absolutely. one. Absolutely. That we're talking about mental anguish as well. Does that is, is that as bad as losing a leg? Cause I think so. Like, where do we draw the line? You're making a completely arbitrary point distinction where you're saying, okay, now it's okay to kill a person, but at all other times you can't. And that's kind of weird. Can I take a quick second to respond? Sure. By all means. So the phrase high risk of severe harm for me is not defined. I just think whatever that arbitrary line is, it needs to be held consistent for all life. So whether that life is five years, sorry, all human life. So whether that, okay. sorry, all human organism life. Whether that human organism is five-year-old, 50 years old, or five-month-old fetus, or a five-day-old embryo, I think that level needs to be held consistent. I don't know where that line should be, but as long as it's consistent. So if you wouldn't kill a five-year-old for uh, removing your gallbladder, then you shouldn't be able to kill a fetus for the same thing. But then who makes that distinction? Like when you say hold it consistent, uh, court. who's who's in charge of me? So courts, courts are in charge of deciding sorry, when sorry, you can no, and can't. Lawmakers, lawmakers. So lawmakers, you, lawmakers are, oh, go ahead, for, go ahead for us. Cause I'm trying to wrap I was my just going to ask, you're fine. It just, do you think that as it stands today, the way that we frame it, that abortion is akin to murder? Because it sounds like that's the case based on uh, what you're saying. It depends on what you mean by murder. If you mean like unlawful killing in Texas, technically it is unlawful killing of a human organism. Um, You're murder, using legalistic I, I terms now. We're or, asking you what you yeah, think. Yeah, I, I just mean your yeah, opinion. Say, like, do you, not not technically, like in your I, eyes, I do you say, see abortion as murder? I, I see it more as hiring a hitman. Um, I see Wait, the abortion what, position as. What should, some, be, what should be the legal punishment? then for abortion because there's a punishment so, uh, for hiring I think it was like i think it was like two weeks ago um matt dillahunty had a phone call about this and he hung up on the guy after he said his opinion so i'm probably gonna get hung up on but i think if you hire a hitman to kill any or human organism you should go to jail so anybody who has an abortion should go to jail after it becomes illegal yes I, okay, but I for how long? Is high risk of severe harm. For how long? Well, oh, again, I can't hire a hitman because I think someone's going to hurt me. So that right. doesn't really track. No, but you can hire a bodyguard. You can hire a bodyguard. Doctors in this situation right don't count as bodyguards. You've said hitman the whole time. It's not a bodyguard performing yeah, the abortion. Yeah, if it's illegal. Right? Well, I mean, if a bodyguard kills yeah. somebody, it's either legal yeah. or not. If it was hired, Go ahead, no, like, hit, nuance I mean, is falling apart for me, and I have some further issues. Bodyguard. What, one sec. I, one sec. Sorry, you no. haven't been hung up on. I'm listening, but I, now I have further questions because now we're entering into the legalistic realm. So, how do you know if somebody is, has has a justified abortion because there's a risk of harm? How do you know if somebody has an abortion versus a miscarriage? Because now we're entering into like, does do do people who are pregnant have any sort of right to medical privacy? now right mm -hmm. because if we're entering to the legalistic realm and you're saying well then these people should like these people should be going to jail because it's akin to hiring a hitman when you end a pregnancy then now you are saying that nobody who is capable of being pregnant has a right to any sort of medical privacy because every time somebody has a miscarriage we now have to ascertain what caused that miscarriage, whether or not they were attempting to self-induce it, whether or not they were they made a choice that could have potentially, even if it was an arbitrarily in it, like choice that they didn't intend to make that resulted in the end of that pregnancy. Um, you, you now look need to look at their medical records to see if they did have an abortion, to look to find out if they were even pregnant to begin with. So do we not have the right to medical privacy? And I do see that this is now going more to the legal aspect of uh, it. I'm, yes, you did I'm, that. I'm, I'm, That's <laughs> a big part of what you're saying, That's, though. You did that. You brought us there I, by I'm talking the about person. how the courts yeah. and lawmakers make the rule of the land the and what person. should happen. I'm not the best person to discuss legal, but I will respond to your question. 
Um, mm-hmm. So HIPAA uh, applies to anybody who, um, for a personal medical decision, um, mm-hmm. abortion automatically involves two humans. So it's not just one person. So, so does a miscarriage. Um, By your justification, so, yeah, so does a miscarriage. How do you ascertain whether or not I've had yeah. a miscarriage or an abortion? And I've had, I've never had an abortion. I have had a miscarriage. When I had that miscarriage, sorry, um, no. should I have had to prove, thank you. Uh, it was a wanted pregnancy, actually. Um, when I had that miscarriage, should I have had to, at that point, uh, had to prove to the legal system that uh, it was in fact a miscarriage and that I had done everything in my power to retain that pregnancy. Because if you're entering into that realm, then it's not simply ending a pregnancy via abortion that becomes an issue. It's making any decision that could be any type, perceived as any type of threat to the viability of that pregnancy. And there are so many things that you may not even know about your body. Like I have multiple sclerosis, for example. There's things that I learned when I was pregnant about how I needed to act and behave to retain, to make sure that I protect both my body and the baby. And I needed to act differently. If I hadn't had that Mm -hmm. education, I would have had another miscarriage. The reason I had the first one was because I didn't have that ex- that education and I was exposed to some chemicals that caused me to have an asthma attack and that asthma attack caused me to have a miscarriage. I didn't realize that was going to happen. If I did, then I would have avoided those chemicals. So I was negligent in that case based on your paradigm, which means that I should go to jail because at best that would be manslaughter. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I think if you... Um, probably weren't negligent. Uh, it doesn't sound like there was anything you tried to do to kill your kid. Um, I think it's That's not, but negligence means that you aren't happen. trying. That the, I was negligent. Yeah, there. Should I be in jail right now? Thing. Should I be in jail right now? Because I didn't actively educate myself and what my body required in order to retain the pregnancy. And as a result, made a decision that ended in me having a miscarriage. This is a real life example. This really happened. Should I be, uh, should I be in well, jail my- right now? My quick answer is no. Um, I have Why? a kid as well. I don't know any. I don't know everything that could kill her. There may be something that I could have researched that would end up killing her, but I didn't research. That's not negligence. Um, that's just a part yeah. of life and being. No, a parent. If, if you leave, if you leave a gallon of bleach out and your infant child drinks it and dies, even if you didn't know that bleach was poisonous, that's still negligence, and that is right. still you are going right. to be convicted of a crime for that. So why is it any different for Shane? Right, but because I, I mean, I don't think it's anything, and I, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but I don't think it's anything like that. Um, if you, if your kid dies because they ate a um, fruit that was from a bad part of the planet that I don't know is having diseases or something, and then they get a d- disease, that's negligence. If you want to stay up on the news, your kid would be alive. You can't go to jail for that. There, not every right. case of somebody would dying still be responsible without. for that, though. Like then, the company that sold the fruit no. would be responsible. Somebody would still go to jail. So that's what we're asking: is really? why do you have a different set of legal analysis, a different framework mm-hmm. for abortion than you do for living humans if they're the same thing? Right. Well, I didn't know somebody would go to jail for that. I don't think they should. You don't think that if I sell dangerous products and someone else dies because of it, I should be punished for that? If you did everything you can to make sure it's not dangerous, no. That's that's the whole point of liability, is I did something wrong. It doesn't matter if I meant to. There was a harm done. Somebody got hurt. Somebody needs to be held responsible. Right. No, I, the, I feel like, like may, maybe this is just a difference of our... Uh, legal opinions but i don't think i feel like if you did everything you could to make sure that fruit was healthy for society it turns out it wasn't we're talking about fruit right now I don't feel like that. <laughs> it's, it's real weird like so, right. here's the problem i think with a lot of these abortion yeah. conversations go yeah. ahead we're gonna have to let you go soon but i, I really want to get this in because i think that this is an overreaching sure. problem with a lot of these abortion conversations that people have is that people want to see it very black and white They want to see it as either having an abortion is murdering another human or having an abortion isn't murdering another human. But there are real life implications when we start going down this road to female bodied people and to people who have uteruses who can get pregnant. 
because you are encroaching upon our medical privacy. You are putting us into this like incredibly legalistic debate where we're now having a debate of, about fruit for some reason when we should be like, it's, if there is so much more nuance and so much more impact in attempting to control what women can do with their bodies than is simply this black and white look like having an abortion is murder, not having an abortion is murder, and then avoiding all of the nuance. Once you get into the nuance, like we're doing now, it starts to get a little bit ridiculous. Once you follow the paths and you realize where they actually lead it starts to get a little bit ridiculous. It means that I don't have medical privacy. It means that anytime, if, if I have a miscarriage, that means that I have to now what prove I had a miscarriage. Uh, the, the only other alternative would be that if I had, if I, it, that everybody who's ever had an abortion could just say that they had a miscarriage, right? Right? We could, we could just say I had a miscarriage. Who's going to prove us wrong? Uh, who's going to prove us wrong? The, the, answer to the, to, the answer to that question is that we don't have medical privacy. We don't get to make decisions for ourselves. And it also gives the fetus a, se a separate set of rights. You're saying that there are circumstances in which you, it is justifiable to, to have an abortion. But then who gets to determine those circumstances? Who gets to say it is justifiable in column A and it is not justifiable in column B? Who gets to assess whether or not you're in column A and column B? This, it, it's so utterly ridiculous and it's so frustrating and I've, I've been listening for a very long time to constantly have to debate whether or not I have the right to make my own goddamn decisions about what happens to my body and what I use it for and every time every time I have this conversation so help me god it's with the man and it's just like, it makes me vibrate. It makes me literally vibrate that I have to sit here quietly listening to whether or not I should have the rights that I have to do what I want with myself. Like, I, I just wish that any man ever would have to fucking list, go through something like that on a day-to-day -day basis. Because a lot less of these conversations would happen. Go ahead. Tell me why I, why you get to decide what I do with my body. I'm listening. I'm just going to say uh, three things. Uh, I think one, um, where we're probably reaching the end of the call, I appreciate it. You guys have been really nice until this last little bit, which is still pretty good. Just a little thing I want to take on in a second. Uh, second, I didn't call to convince you guys to be pro-life. I'm trying to unconvince myself of being pro-life. One of my arguments is um, abortion is not analogous to um, organ donation. Um, I don't know if you guys agree with me, but so far I still feel like I'm in the same camp. And the third thing is it's very sexist to say because I'm a man, I can't have an opinion. I didn't say that. I did it. Uh, nope, you're going to stop right now because I never fucking said that. I did not say because you're a man, you can't have a decision. Uh, uh, I did not. As a matter of fact, I had a conversation with you for the past 20 minutes about it where I was very calm. So I'm not going to let you tell me that I said something I did not. All I said was every time I have this conversation, it's with a man. That's what I said. And that's worth pointing out because A, it's true and B, it's telling. If I didn't think you were allowed to have an opinion, I wouldn't have sat here and had a conversation with you. And listen to what you had to say. It's very sexist to say that my sex matters in a negative way. And then it's I, also oh my God. To say that thank you. you. We're going to let you go. Goodbye. Have a nice day. I've, 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 apparently, we've hit my limit. I had some of those emotions I was talking about earlier. Go <laughs> off, Queen. <laughs> It's just like it, it's you've legit. never had to experience this, and therefore you have a weird set of rules for it. Well, that's sexist for you to say that I haven't experienced it. Therefore, I do. like come on, dude. <laughs> it's it's, just, it's. I wish. Uh, no, I don't wish this on anybody. Actually, but mm -hmm. the people that have to quietly sit through conversations about whether or not they should or shouldn't have rights, yep, being pushed back against. Because they say, this is frustrating for me. Because you're, you're forcing me into having a dialogue with you. And you're, you're, you're telling me that if I don't have it in a certain kind of way, if I don't have the appropriate tone and listen to you mm -hmm. and reflect what you're saying in the exact manner that you deem acceptable. Yep. 
that that's unreasonable of me. Well, you're talking about whether or not I should or should not have fucking rights. And isn't it weird that like I never have to argue. I, I've I've yet to have a discussion about what medical procedures I should have access to, what bathrooms I should have to use, what, you know, all the all these ridiculous freaking arguments that we're having to have. I don't have to do any of it. And so no matter what I bring to the table, it's valid. But anytime somebody who's in a, a, an oppressed group is like, hey, yo, this is really freaking aggravating for very obvious reasons. Now, all of a sudden, tone matters. Right. <laughs> Fuck off, right. dude. Oh, you're being unreasonable. Yeah, uh, yeah oh, yes, yes. yes. And, and, and sexist. It's sexist. And, uh-huh. and it always goes, well, you, you saying a man shouldn't have an opinion. Never said that. Never said nope. that. Talk to you, but that's that's what's next time. on the script, of course. Until we got to the point that for some reason we were talking about whether or not you can sell spoiled fruit to people, and then I called an audible <laughs> because, dude, this is insane. I was getting, <laughs> I was getting to the end of my rope at that point as well. <laughs> it's, it's so weird. It's, it was the same thing as like you know, to to draw a comparison. It's the same thing as like when we were having you know, protests about you know, Black Lives Matter. Well, why aren't you talking? Why are you setting yourselves apart? Why aren't you talking about white people? Why aren't you talking? Because that's not what we're talking about right, right. now. So, like, we talk about, hey, women's rights are human rights, and like, we should make sure that they're treated. The same. Well, why aren't you talking about men? Why aren't men allowed to be in the? Because you're in every fucking conversation. <laughs> so, like, we're just having a different one for a minute. Just... Right. You just need to elect a president if this isn't fucking about you. And listen yep, to him. Yep. <laughs> oh God. Yes, just that's what we need. We need more straight white men to say exactly what you just said, because then someone might listen and it'll be easy. <laughs> <laughs> right. 